Hello, hello again, everyone. I'm so happy you're back to finish up with the grand finale of Lunar Dreams here in part three. As you can see, it wound up being about as long as part two. I miscalculated that a little bit, but oh well, that's how it goes sometimes. So we will pick up where we last left off in part two in just a moment, but first I wanna give you a quick tip on the V-stitch increase row because as mentioned, as the work grows and grows and your shawl gets larger and larger, you will have more regular V-stitches in between each V-stitch increase. So if you're taking a look at your work and you're thinking, hmm, maybe the two side increases on both sides of your work are getting a little bit too close to either your end or your center point, you may certainly stagger the placement of your increases just one over to the left or the right going up for each repeat if you want to if you are looking at you think well that's just a little more evenly spaced out just make sure that the location of your increases and stitch markers are the same on both sides of your work. You don't have to do this, but I just want to let you know it's perfectly fine if you do. And just to be clear, that's only for the two increases on both sides, your top center and the two ends always stay the same. All right, so now let's move on and get started. All right, so now row eight, which is our wrong side row and this is our all double crochet row which is a little bit different from where we did with our setup rows okay and you I, I do want you to move your center stitch marker up each time but you don't have to move these four side stitch markers for our increase until you get two rows up from now and I'll show you that you can just leave them where they are for now because you don't have to do that every single time you'll still be able to see your work and it'll save you from having to deal with taking out and putting back in six stitch markers each or five excuse me each time it just it isn't necessary and another thing is what you're going to see as you work this v-stitch increase row that we worked on row seven at the end of part one. Your work, you can see it's just uh, quite a bit of stitches. It's starting to ripple a little bit. Don't worry about that because that is going to smooth out when you do your fourth row, the shell row of the repeat. And then you will see as your work grows also on the shell row because it does straighten and smooth that out some. Sometimes your shell stitches will start to curl a little bit. Don't worry about that either because we're going to be doing a shell increase for our final border to add some nice fullness back in. Okay. All right, so where are we? Row eight, all double crochet, chain three. Turn your work. We are going to work a total, including our chain three, five double crochets over the first V-stitch increase and every V-stitch increase all the way around. All right, so chain three counts as one, so we're going to place one double crochet in the V-stitch this time one double crochet through both stitches of that center double crochet and two double crochets in the second v-stitch a total of five so there's one two three four five okay then we're going to work two double crochets and each v-stitch up to your next stitch marker and on this row there are only two v-stitches all right so we did our first five now two double crochets in each of the next two okay 
Oops, getting hung up. And then now we are going to work five double crochets over the next increase. So this time around, because we're not doing a chain three, we're going to work the two directly into the first V-stitch. One, two. One double crochet in the center double crochet. And two in the next V-stitch. All right, and that's your repeat. And two double crochet in each V-stitch up to your next increase. Which comes up quickly on the beginning row here. Or, you know, beginning repeat anyway. All right, so there's my next increase. And you see having a stitch marker really makes it visible so as you just get flowing along you don't accidentally miss that. Alright, so now you just work another five across this repeat. Two double crochet in the first, one in that center double crochet, two double crochet in the next V-stitch. And here we are coming up on our center pretty soon. Work two double crochet into the next V stitch because the very next is another increase. Here we are in the center. I did my two in the last V stitch. And now we're going to do the exact same. Work the five double crochets across the V stitch increase. Nothing different or special even in the center this time. Two double crochet in the first V stitch, one double crochet in the center double crochet, two in the next V stitch that made up that increase. Stitch marker goes into that third, the middle double crochet of the center five. Okay, And then you just repeat all the way around to the other side with two double crochet in the next V stitch. Your five double crochets across your next increase. And again two double crochet in each of the next two just like you did on the other side. Five across the next increase and so on and I will meet you at the last V stitch to show you how we work that set of five. All right, here I am at the end of row eight. You can see the work is still a little ripply, just as it should be for our next shell row. Okay, so I have my last two V stitches. I will place two double crochet in the next V stitch. Oops. I can hang on to my yarn. Okay. There we go. One in that center double crochet. Then one double crochet in your last V stitch and one double crochet in the top of your chain three. Okay. There we go, and now at the end of row eight, you should have 55 double crochets. So now row nine, very easy. Just like the shell row we did before. And they, we are now working on the right side. Chain one and turn. And again, just a little friendly reminder, don't over cinch that chain down, okay? And work a nice full single crochet. Skip two and shell. Cluster, chain, cluster, chain, 
cluster. No chain on the last cluster. Again, three, two double crochet clusters with the chain one space on each side of the center, right? Okay, skip two double crochets, single crochet in the next. That's your repeat. Skip two, shell in the next. Chain one, second shell, chain one, third shell, no chain, skip two, single crochet in the next. Skip two, work your shell, and that's your repeat all the way around. When you get to that center, remember to mark the center of your cluster just as we did in the beginning setup sequence. Okay, come around, just place your stitch marker in the middle cluster of your center shell. Okay, that will mark right up here, and then you come all the way around. You should have, after your last shell, three stitches left. Whereas we did before, you skip the next two and you single crochet in the third chain up. So I will meet you there. And at the end of row nine, you should have nine shells all together, one in the center and four on each side. Nine shells, ten single crochets, and you double the number of the shells, which would give you 18 chain one spaces, two for each shell. Okay, I'm at the end of row nine, our fourth row and our four row repeat with the shell row. Here I am with the three stitches left, the two double crochets and the chain three. So like I said, you skip the two doubles and single crochet in the top of that chain three. Remember there was no chain four on this row because that was an all double crochet row. And as a landmark for you, your center shell will always land in the middle of that set of five center double crochets. Okay, so now onward to row 10, which begins our four row repeat that I will recap very briefly, but on row 11, the V-stitch increase row is where I'm going to show you how you're going to carry forward your stitch markers on the V-stitch increases to angle them in such a way where they fan out and you continue that even spacing in between the increases. Okay. All right, so recapping for row 10, which is an easy repeat of row 6, our V-stitch and single crochet row. Is the V-stitch, is the chain 4, turn, double crochet into your beginning single crochet. All right, chain 2. It's where you single crochet in the first chain 1 space of your shell, chain 2 single crochet in the second chain one space. Chain two again, V-stitch in that single crochet that is in between your two shells. Not crocheting accidentally into the top of the last cluster shell. Okay, V-stitch in the single crochet. chain two, single crochet in the first chain one space, chain two, single crochet in that second chain one space of the shell, chain two, V-stitch in the single crochet. Repeat this sequence all the way around and I will meet you at the center. Here we are, row ten to the center. Chain two to begin, right after the last V-stitch, single crochet into first chain one space of the shell. And now just chain one, single crochet in the top of that cluster, chain one, 
single crochet in the second chain one space that's real close to that cluster you just made now okay now just right back into your chain two V stitch in the next single crochet and then you just carry on with that same sequence you did on the first side be sure to uh, replace your stitch marker back into that center single crochet okay, that middle single crochet of your center all right and right on back into pattern chain two do your singles in the chain one space of your shells chain two V stitch in the single in between the shells all the way to the end after you finish your last single I mean shell you do your single crochets chain two V stitch in the top of your single crochet to complete row 10 you will have 10 V stitches and 19 single crochets now we're going to move on to row 11. 11 is a repeat of row 7, the all V stitch row. V stitches and V stitch increases into where our stitch markers are, including one at the beginning and one at the end. Alright, so chain 4, always for the V stitch. Turn your work, do a V stitch increase your double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all into the beginning V-stitch. Alright, so now we're on the right side. So I want you to take a look here. Okay, here's, here's the beginning. And as I mentioned earlier, as your work grows, the more increases you do, the more stitches you are going to have in between your increases. So now what we're going to do is use your stitch marker from your last V stitch increase as a guide. So at the beginning of your work here, so to speak, your stitch markers are uh, line up a little bit more with the next V stitch in the following rows. But they will tend to offset from each other and angle a little bit and as your work grows and as they do you can offset and move that stitch marker over a little bit to the right on the first side going up to the next V stitch but on the left side because it's a mirror and the position is opposite on the left side you're going to be angling a little bit to the left okay I hope that makes sense so I'm going to show you this and all the other rows are a repeat of what we've been doing. This is the only one, again, that you need to just look at your placement a little bit. Just make sure there's good spacing in between your center increase across to the edge and they aren't too close to the center or each other and the two ends. Okay, so now we have our first V stitch increase at the beginning, and as always, you place one V stitch in each single crochet, one regular V stitch into the next V stitch, one V stitch again now into each of the next single crochets and then now you can place one V stitch increase into the next V stitch because that lines up and it's still angling off to the right a little bit 
take your stitch marker out and replace it into that center double crochet of the V stitch increase and then carry on with your sequence one regular V stitch and each of the next two single crochets and you see now how where this the stitch marker is from your V stitch increase of the previous repeat does not go straight up you've got your two single crochets here so this is where you just keep angling to the right. This is where you will place your second V-stitch increase. That's still one V-stitch in each single crochet and a V-stitch increase and the V-stitch angle to the right of your stitch marker. It, and your increases don't necessarily have to be in the exact place every time as long as they are evenly spaced apart and you place your increases in the same distance on your other side as you did on the first side. Alright, so then now we do one regular V-stitch in each of the next two single crochets one V-stitch, regular V-stitch in the next. There was no increase to be had there. And then now one regular V-stitch in the first of the three single crochets in the center. Oops. And we are placing one V-stitch increase in that center single crochet and remember to remark your center with the stitch marker around that middle double crochet regular V stitch in the next single crochet because now we've completed our center so we are doing as a mirror image of what we did on the first side of the center. We're doing on the left side except you are now leaning to the left. Okay. Alright, so you just keep working one regular V-stitch in each V-stitch and in each single crochet up to your next stitch marker. So you see the stitch marker, if you go straight up, there are your single crochets, so you are working into the V-stitches and you are angling to the left now. So you work a V-stitch increase, double crochet, into chain one, this v -stitch double crochet, here, that angled up chain to the one, left from and then a double crochet the in the top of your chain three to complete the last row. v stitch right, so increase. And finish this v stitch row, placing a regular v stitch in every v stitch and single crochet, and a v stitch increase where you have your stitch markers. And I'll meet you across at the end to refresh on how we work the V-stitch increase there. I'm back at the end and in the last V-stitch work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and place your last double crochet in the third chain up to complete your V-stitch increase. And at the end of row 11, you should have 36 V stitches. Alright, so now to recap row 12. Row 12 is just our double crochet row. You just chain 3, turn, and you work the 5 double crochet over each V stitch increase. The first double crochet is your chain 3, 
So you just want to place one double crochet in the first, one in the top of that center double crochet, and two in the next. Okay, make sure you have five, two double crochet in every V stitch up to your next V stitch increase, and then work your five double crochets across your increase. So there's my first, so I place two double crochets in the first, one in the middle double crochet, two in the second V-stitch, and you just repeat two double crochets in each V-stitch five across your V-stitch increase and same for when you get to the center and just make sure you replace your stitch marker and put it in the center double crochet of your five and you continue and you work all the way around when you get to the end your last V-stitch increase place two double crochets in the first one in the center one in the last and one in the top of your chain three. All right, so I'm going to work this row, meet you at the end, briefly recap the shell row, and then show you how I create the border. So now we are on row 13, which finishes up at the last row, row four, of our repeat sequence. And this is our shell row, and it's also going to be exactly the same for our border at the beginning and then we're just going to do a cluster increase to add some more fullness back in. Chain one and turn, single crochet in the beginning, double crochet, skip two, shell in the next, yarn over, one cluster, chain one, two clusters, chain one, third cluster, no chain, skip two, single crochet, skip two cluster, skip two, single crochet. Alright, all the way around, even in the center, placing the stitch marker in the middle of your center shell cluster right into the top that elongated stitch in that middle cluster of your center and then you just carry on with the pattern all the way around end up with three as always skip the last two double crochets single crochet in your third chain up you will only have three chains because on that previous row you only worked double crochets okay and at the end of row 13, you should have 13 shells. <laughs> and so that those are all the numbers I'm going to give you. I just wanted to get you started so you get the sequence down and the repeat and you can see how the work grows again with a total of four shells increased after each sequence and 12 V stitches more than you had before after your last set of four sequins. Okay, so now as far as working the border, you're still ending on the fourth row of your four row repeat after you've done your double crochet row. And you work the shell exactly the same. You chain one turn, single crochet in the beginning, double crochet, skip two. You begin your shell in the next. So you work your three and all you're going to do is add one more chain one and one more cluster and that's it. All right, so you're going to chain one, add a fourth cluster, no chain afterwards just like we did before, and then you're going to skip the next two and in the next now you're going to work a cluster shell increase. So there's the first cluster, chain one, second cluster, chain one, third cluster, which is what we did before. Now we're going to chain one again, 
add a fourth cluster. No chains. Skip two, single crochet in the next. And what that gives you is now you have, instead of three clusters with two chain one spaces, you have four clusters with three chain one spaces and your chain one becomes in the center. That third one you get a nice center point. So I'm going to, let's see, do one more cluster and then I'm going to do a regular cluster. I'm going to do a cluster increase and then a regular because I want you to see the height and the width difference and how much nicer I think that looks personally for to add fullness and to really ground the bottom edge of your shawl and to give it a lovely frame. Okay, so there's there are four. Alright, so I've done three sets and then now I'm going to let's see skip two single crochet in the next. I want to just work a regular cluster here with the three. And just working those extra couple of stitches makes all the difference. And that's what you do all the way around. Okay. Squeaky chair. I tell you one of these days I'm really I'm gonna have to make a note for myself. I'm sorry. Let's hope that's not too irritating as it is to me from my end. Keep forgetting to oil it. Okay. This, let's see, where is it? See the difference there? And this regular shell compared to the shell increase. It's lower, it's a lot lower, and it's more narrow. So the clusters and the shape and everything just really stand out, and that helps give you that just lovely lovely drape at the end. So that's what you just do all the way around. Work a shell increase including across the top and then when you come to the end as before you will have two double crochets left in your chain three so you skip the next two, the doubles, and you single crochet in your third chain up and just to remind you you will only have three chains at this end because we just worked double crochets across. And then you can finish it off there. You And on the right side, you can add fringe if you like. And um, you can place it wherever you want to. I did a little, my little diagram. <laughs> so here are the shells and here are the single crochets in between. And my thought is you could do one of couple few ways is you could just put fringe if you like however long or short in just every single crochet in between the shells and at each end. I think that might look nice. Or you could place fringe in that center chain one space that was now created with the shell increase coming out of the shell. I kind of like it in between myself. That's up to you. Or you could do both and make like a starburst sun rays type of effect. Or you could do just say on the single crochets. You know, you could do shorter fringe. And in between the shells you could do longer fringe. Shorter fringe longer. See? Like that. That might create an interesting look. Almost like a little starburst. And speaking of bursts, when I was looking at the stitch, that within the pattern itself, as we're working our shells and working each consecutive row, they almost the top of them and the work from the previous row takes on like um, 
flower starburst effect and it reminded me of star or night jasmine the little blossoms that they get we used to have those growing at our home in california and we were a little bit higher elevation rural and it was hotter drier climate and those star jasmine night jasmine thrived and they smelled absolutely amazing intoxicating on balmy summer evenings uh, they were incredible and we had them growing right by the house and they just really took off and, and just absolutely wonderful so anyway yeah there we go this completes our lunar dreams curved shawl Please let me know if you would, as always, I love your comments, and if you make this, what yarn you used it in, what size that, what you went for, the shawlette, mid-size, or complete full body size. Okay, well take care everyone. Please come back again next time for more tutorials and yarn related fun. Alright, I hope to see you again soon, and until then, bye for now.